the entire mix without all the plugins. Sucks. On come the plugins. Hello, I'm going to be walking you through how I mixed my track Victim of the Groove and a good place to start would be when we recorded it. So the drums were recorded at Longwave Studios in Cardiff. I'll walk you through what mics we used. We start with the Shaw 91 boundary mic. I think it's like a 91A, something like that. Um, basically what this is, it's like a triangle looking thing and um, it's not a triangle looking thing at all. I don't know what I'm saying. It's a weird looking thing. And um, basically you put it inside the kick drum next to the batter head. And when the when the drummer hits the kick pedal and that meets the skin of the drum, then it kind of picks up that first initial bit of contact. So you're not really getting an awful lot of low end or like boominess of the kick drum. It's mainly that kind of like clicky-ish sound, which I'll play now. Obviously you can tell that I gated it on the way in as well. So there's not a lot of snare bleed and stuff like that. Uh, there's a little kick sample as well to bring in more of the room. I think it might have been from like, uh, oh no, it's just a sample that I maybe have downloaded. Organic Pop Rock Kit. I think that's one I made myself. Um, then you have Kick In. I used an RE20. This sounds like this. Kind of similar to that first one, but a bit more mid-range. And then the Kick Out, I used the Jay-Z uh, V47. A lot of like huge sort of like low mids in that. And then I used a Yamaha sub kick uh, for that kick sub. Then I had snare top a Shaw 57A, uh, which is like a Shaw SM57, but with better noise rejection at the sides. So it's great for like, um, like well, perfect for snare. Like, so you're basically not getting any hi-hat bleed, which is key. Um, it sounds like this. Sounds great. And then snare bottom, I used a AKG C414. Hi hat I used um, an SM7B. Sounds amazing, love that. Then you've got the overheads, which are Coles 4038. And the overheads obviously kind of give you like the main picture of the drums. Then you've got uh, another V47 behind the drummer. An SM58 on the floor in between the snare and the kick. A Bayer Dynamic M160 as a, like a mono overhead. Then another trick from Ramesh. He basically, he knows his studio very well, obviously. There's a spot in the corridor where if you put two mics, X and Y, so kind of like, like that, um, it just sounds incredible. Um, he marked it on the floor. He was just like, I've put tape there. I always put uh, two mics there. And I used two Jay-Z, Jay-Z, whatever, V67s. And they sound like this. Yeah, they sound great. Like a, a really kind of liven up that uh, that sound. And then a mono C414 in the room. There's a lot of mics through a distressor. Sounds great. And then same with the colds. Another colds in front of the drum kit. So uh, it's something like 19, 20 mics on that. That's crazy. Then a shaker. Simple shaker we recorded. Um, and then here's the drums on their own. Yeah, so I'll walk you through the drums. Here's the EQ. I'll just I'll fly through this. So here's the EQ on the 91, which is the boundary mic. Then kick in the RE20. That's what I've done. I've not done an awful lot. Just kind of like we were recording through a lot of analog gear on the way in. So like compression through like a distressor or like an LA-2A, something like that. Um, that's the kick out. Here's my kick sub. Just rolling off the, rolling off the high end. The snare top. I've done a bit of multi-band compression, which I, my trial's expired for, so I can't show you exactly what was happening, but it looks like I was just ducking some lows, high mids, and then some high end. Then I got rid of a frequency I wasn't really liking in the snare top. I'll boost it for you now, just so you can see. It was that. That sounds much better like that. Snare bottom, just kind of some EQ really. Bit of low end and then taking that same frequency away out in the bottom. Hi-hat, I did a little bit more to this. So this is the EQ for the hi-hat. So getting rid of any low end 
Um, the low end on a hi-hat mic, you don't want it. You want low end from like the kick or a little bit of the snare. So anything you don't want low end from, um, just get rid of it. So I've kind of like cut everything from 150 below. Um, then just a few little curves that make personally how I like that mic to sound. Overheads, I think I put it through some tape maybe on the way in. I think it was like Roger Mayer 456. So it's like some analog sort of tape emulation, which sounded great. Just kind of like rolls off the top end. I mean, there's not an awful lot of top end on Coles 4038s anyway. Um, but yeah, it sounded really nice. So yeah, they sound great. Then the mono over, sorry, the V47. Low Again, low end's gone, didn't want it. Shelved off a little bit high end because it's quite a bright mic. Then 57 on the floor, just done some cha uh, some Logic EQ. Just That was the closest thing that I could, yeah, it was quick to get that up. Uh, then the M160, again, low end's gone, high end's dipped a little bit. Nothing particularly like outstanding. Nothing on the corridor mics, just they just sounded incredible. I love the way they sounded. Uh, the mono room, so that's the C4 and 4. Low end again is gone, so like making room for the low end on the kick drum mics, because that's the low end that I really want. I don't want low end from the room because it just muddies up the drum sound a little bit. Um, so again, 300's gone, boosting a little bit of 1.5 or 1.4, and then not, like shelved off the top end a little bit on that. And I've done some processing on the drum bus. I'll turn all the processing off on that and show you what that sounds like. With kind of tightens them up a little bit so i've got compression with the distressor api i'll move them out of the way so you can see my settings then channeling key i would have done some uh filtering at the very start so i cut away the low end and the high end and filter it back in as the track builds to the intro and it kind of makes the uh low end seem more prominent even though i've not added anything i've just kind of like taken it away uh, which makes it seem bigger when it comes in tiny bit of eq there nothing really that you'd notice um seems like it was just bothering me and then a little bit of uh devil lock kind of doing not much but let's play around with it see what it did a little bit of saturation just to kind of color that a little bit more which i which i quite like um and then my license expired for this but just ducking some of that 5k just so it's not too bright cool then i've got these swell sounds so this is a boss harmonist pedal um, basically what this is doing, uh, when you press the pedal, it splits the signal into two and one half of the signal goes down and like falls down and the other one kind of rises up and it sounds like this. It sounds pretty cool actually. Yeah, sounds great. Again, create suspense, kind of quite royal blood sort of sound. And then I got this sample from Splice. This is just like a, a swell in the background type thing. Splice is a great, um, it's like a subscription service you pay and then there's like royalty free samples that you can download. Um, so I use that a lot for like any drum stuff. Um, but other than like that one kick sample, this is all just the natural sound of what we recorded at Ramesh's place. Um, yeah, just sounds great. I'll play that again for you. Yeah, super, super punchy. Uh, love, love that sound that we got. I think the kit was a hybrid. It was maybe a, a Gretsch kit mixed with the Yamaha kit. It was a drum kit of some sorts, and that's not very helpful to you, but there you go. Then we'll move on to bass. So bass, um, the original bass was tracked. Uh, literally, I think Josh, my bass player, tracked it like through a Focusrite 2i2, um, and then I split the signal. I just duplicated it and put one through an amp and one through DI. Um, here's what his bass sound like, DI. I think he got like a... Um, I think he might have been using a jazz bass with some new strings, hence why it sounds a bit bright. And then here's the amp. Cool. And the amp, it's just, again, I use amp simulations a lot. I don't use real amps just because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered. But if it's a bigger project that I feel like those tiny differences might add up, then I might use it. But as it was me, I didn't really care too much. I just wanted it to sound good. And it did. So that's what I used there. And then I, uh, here's where the interesting bit comes in. So a lot of people ask me when I've sent them like, teasers or a bit of the demo or something how did i get that guitar sound um i didn't it's not guitars it's bass um so i tracked this bass just has such a forward mid-range if you like distort it and stuff um so here's the one layer this is just my squire jazz bass cost me 200 quid and through a load of different uh different sort of like distortion uh plugins and stuff here's what it sounds like one layer Then layer two. 
layer three. There's a lot of layers. And these are all double track left and right as well. And that's all that weird sounds that you hear when I press pause. And then this, this one, which is the original stems I tracked about a year ago, but again, still same bass. Sounds like this. Cool. So the bass would have been tracked through a Fender uh, MTGA something. Oh, yeah, something like that. It's like a distortion pedal. Um, there's that, but the main bulk of it is being done through a plugin called Isotope Trash. Um, I just put it on this channel. It's not doing anything on this channel, but this is what it looks like. Um, there was a preset called like Big Ice or something like that. Um, I used that and it just sounded incredible. So this is just like all these bass layers are just a mixture of different processing through this plugin um, to try and get it to sound as huge as possible. And that's what it kind of did. And then uh, on the bass channel, there's... Okay, I've processed them all in different buses and stuff. Um, but yeah, I've just gated a lot of it, get it super, super tight. Um, and then all of those together sound like this. <laughs> Mix with the drums. Yeah. Then we go to electric guitars. Nothing particularly fancy. I went through something like an uh, Amplitude 4, I think was the plugin I used. Again, Amp Sim didn't mic up an amp. I just went DI in and then Amp Simmed it. Um, then it sounded like this. Nothing special. I might have used my Fender Strat for this. Um, on the top position, rolled off the low end. Um, then I think it was like a Vibralux type thing, or maybe a Duo Sonic. I don't. It was some amp sim. I I printed it and I haven't got it there to recall. Sorry. Um, then this is re this is really really cool. So this I tracked uh, the same guitar through a Pog, which is like a pedal. I put a photo up somewhere you can see what it looks like. Um, and this is where the real magic happens in getting a cool room sound. So. I don't have a good room. I'm literally recording in like my living room. Um, so this plugin is amazing. Um, this basically fakes a room sound. Um, there's more to it than that. It kind of like remikes it in a really, really nice studio. So without, with. That sounds incredible. And that mixed with my main uh, thing that I DI'd in sounds like this. gives it a bit of space bit of width some dimensions to it so it's not just so like forward in your face you've got a bit of like yeah bit a bit of body to it as well it just sounds great right, I'm aching from my hands down to my broken hips and I've got no more to give yeah just makes things sound a little bit more sort of spacious and stuff which is great then Dan Weaver we've got some great sounds going on with Dan's guitars um so we tracked through his big sky or blue sky pedal really really nice reverb pedal and a rotary pedal and that's pretty much what this sound sounds like yeah sounds amazing really really nice reverb uh on that so and i, I added a little bit more actually on this so i added some like concert hall onto that as well which is great valhalla reverb plugin amazing plugin um, then later on, we get to some more fuzzy sounds that Dan's doing. So he uses a pedal, uh, it's an Octafuzz pedal. I'll try and find out what it is and get a photo, but can't promise anything. Um, it sounds great, it sounds like this. We did the same thing, we tracked left and right for this bit coming up now, and then we just added like some reverb and stuff onto it as well. Amazing, just track it left and right, just add some width, it sounds amazing. So Devil Lock, uh, some room reverb kind of going on. I'll turn the Devil Lock off and see what that's doing. A lot. That's doing a lot. Yeah, I, I love this plugin, it's amazing. Just like crunching it a bit more, uh, it sounds incredible. And that reverb's doing a little bit, it's not really much going on there. And then I emphasize that good mixing can make a song sound great, but also it's gotta be good parts, good arrangement. Um, and I think Dan's just demonstrates this really, really well here. So here's the bridge part. With mine.
Cool. And the effects cut off incredibly abruptly there. So I basically just routed all the delays, all the reverbs to one bus and called that effects. And then I just turned that down right on that bit because I wanted the bass. I didn't want any effects to hang over this bass bit. <laughs> Yeah, so I wanted, I didn't want any uh, effects to kind of be hanging over that. I wanted it to kind of build with loads of effects and then cut to nothing. Um, and then we're coming towards the end now. And I think Dan adds some extra like beefy, girthy kind of guitars on the end, which sound incredible. Um, again, I think he used, I think he might have used like an octave fuzz mixed with a super octave, like his OC5, something like that. I think that's my. Yeah, that sounds fat mix with and the bass sounds massive let's move on to vocal so vocals um not a lot of effects going on here okay so here's what i did to the vocals so i've just de-assed it again the trial expired for that but i just would have been focusing on maybe like the 9k area um up to about 20k um, just kind of taming those S's because uh, the mic I used was a Jay-Z V67. So it's quite a bright mic, but in a nice way, it's not a bad bright. It's a good bright. But just sometimes when you compress that, um, the S's get a bit too like a bit too heavy, especially on my voice anyway. Um, then some more multiband compressing. So just getting rid of some of the low end and then again, helping those S's there as well. Compression. I've got some Fairchild compression going on into a distressor, into Devil Lock. So I'm going to turn the vocals uh, all the plugins on the vocal channel off and here's what it sounds like i've lost the will to live you overheard you see what i mean about the s's so i put that ds on hurt me right i'm aching from my hands down to my broken hips and helps the s's kind of tuck them in there's the compression and i've got no more to devil lock to give no man no soul EQ. i'm just another broken body with the and then the slap delay and that's literally it I've lost the will to live you over. That's it. That's all I've done to it. I'll walk you through the slap delay because the slap delay is a big part of how I make uh, my vocal sounds in general. So I use a H delay and I put this in ping pong mode, which basically means it just kind of like flicks between the left and right headphones. So without the ping pong mode, it sounds like this. I've lost the will to live With. you overheard me right on. Again, creates a bit of width. Uh, adding to that and devil lock is doing a massive amount of like shifting on this so without i've lost the will to live it. you overheard me right on just crunches it from up a lot basically it makes that sound incredible and i think it's just like a tiny bit of eq going on with a curve bender so not not anything massive just pushing that high mid range and cutting some of that low end out then we go on to vox shoit i think i meant to say shout um or shit probably could be shit um there's every chance that I didn't sing it very well, hence why I labeled it that. And we've got some backing vocals that come in for like one line uh, on this bit. Same note harmony. Love same note harmonies. If you can't find a harmony that moves with the vocal, just pick a note that's consistent with all the chords and just stay on it. Sounds great. Um, backing vocals in the chorus, doing some harmonies, Not nothing massive. Victim of bit of reverb, bit of, of EQ. Victim bit of compression of and then double lock again and then that Valhalla reverb these are the settings for that again they're not doing anything it was just kind of enhancing them what was there there's no crazy things going on there so you don't really need to see that then we've got some more stacks and backing vocal stacks in the pre-chorus if you want into all this life this so this is doing a lot phrase that you need to recite i'm a victim of the i think it just kind of plays with the phasing of it and makes it sound wider micro shift sound toys sound toys bundles incredible devil lock is part of it i recommend you check it out um and then later on let's go back to dan's guitars um in the bridge he has some good parts going on one thing i haven't done yet uh is show you the mix bus. So I'm gonna do that now. And this mix bus, I weirdly used devil lock on the mix bus. I told you this would be me just like bragging about how good this is. Um, I There's not, there's little to, in fact, nothing on the crush, crunch or darkness. I just put the mix at 50% and it makes it sound like, I'll turn it off first. 
I'm back on. I don't know what it does, just the circuitry through it. I know, it just sounds amazing. I've done some filtering on the actual main bus. So, so before the pre-chorus, I cut out that low. I cut out those lows, this weird squeaky effect. Um, yeah, I cut out those lows when it builds up right before the um, the actual chorus kicks in. And it just makes those lows seem a lot fatter when they actually come back in in the chorus. Um, even though I've not actually boosted or done anything to them. It's just taking them away beforehand, which makes you miss it. And when it comes back in, you're like, damn. Yeah. Um, then, Brainworks Townhouse Compressor. Uh, that's doing a little bit. Again, not moving much on the actual compression uh, VU meter. But uh, it just does a nice thing to the low end. I'll play you with and without. Again, you want to be listening on good speakers or headphones and stuff to notice these kind of differences. Um, and then these next two plugins are just kind of adding some glue. Um, we love the word glue. And I'll play you that. You play the chorus, you can tell. Yeah, just kind of like tightened it together makes it feel more like an actual mix rather than just a lot of instruments playing together and then this is the oxford inflator that i talked about before i think uh just basically makes things seem louder than they actually are um and it sounds like this sounds great and uh i think that's it what i'm gonna do i'm gonna turn all these plugins off here is the entire mix without all the plugins. Sucks. On come the plugins. All of this was done pretty much in the box, apart from when we tracked, we tracked a few analog stuff. So, um, yeah. Cool, and I think uh, that concludes pretty much everything. I um, hope I've covered everything that uh, you wanted to know. If there's anything I've missed, just drop me a message and I'll try and uh, make like a little explainer video for you on anything that I've missed. Um, yeah, hopefully this has all worked. This is like my third attempt of trying to break down this mix without the computer or logic crashing or something. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully, you, hopefully you learned something from this and uh, hopefully be back for another one. Bye.